Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Spartan Center here on LCAT. I'm Colin Casey, joined by Matt Rulakis and Patrick Varhu. We begin this week's show with the New England Patriots. They lost this past week to the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday night. Final play of the game, it was a jump ball in the end zone between Rob Gronkowski and Cam Chancellor. And there was some contact made, but no call was made. Pat, we'll start with you. Was that the right no call? Yeah. It was, nothing happened. The refs are stupid. Patriots fans need to stop talking and complaining about this. The refs are stupid? Oh, no. The refs are right. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Patriots are stupid. Well, not usually, but they are right now. So stop complaining. You get angry about everything. Matt, your thoughts? I thought it was a good no call. I mean, I think there was definitely some, there was contact on both sides, both parties involved. I think Gronk initiated the contact, and I think that it really offset, they offset each other. And I think that at the end of the day, you've got to let the players decide the game. I mean, nobody wants to have a game decided on a whistle. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, I, I agree with both of you on that. Um, people will probably think that there's some bias involved in this, considering there none of us here be. are there Patriots. Be, but. but from what I've seen I, I, from that play, I don't see any reason to blow the whistle or throw the flag there. Uh, Minnesota Vikings, boy, have they fallen apart. They started off 5-0. and They've lost their last four games. Uh, are they going to make the playoffs? No. And They're just not going to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that we didn't think had any chance of contending. No, it and was weird, weird, weird season for them. And you, lo losing two of their best offensive players, two to injuries. They're two best offensive players, without a doubt. And uh, Pat, great. Pat, do you agree that they will not make the playoffs? Oh, yeah, there's just no shot. They're lucky if they win another game. Wow. Wow. And they lost to the Bears. I don't know if I'd go that far. They lost to the Bears by like a lot. Like that's pretty. That, it was that was a bad yeah. game for them for sure. Uh, it was a rough Halloween game for them. Uh, the Cowboys now 8-1 and one on the season. Something else I don't think a lot of people saw coming. Uh, are they the favorites to win the NFC Championship? I think they have to be at this point. I mean, they're, they've played better than any team in the NFC to this point. They look great. Offensively, defense is pretty good. I mean, not much to not like. Uh, Pat, how about you? Yeah, I think they're the favorite. I don't really think they are the best team in the NFC. I just don't think anyone can beat them right now. They just seem to be having some luck where I know the Seahawks just beat the Patriots, but they've been having some trouble kind of all season, and I just don't know if anyone can get it done, but I don't think they're a match for, like, the top three teams in the AFC. They think the Patriots, the Raiders, maybe even the Steelers, if they get back on track, are probably better than the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, I got I to gotta say that the Cowboys are the uh, best team in the NFC. Uh, the Seahawks, they've had a very good start to the season. They had a big win last week, but... The Cow what the Cowboys have been doing and what their rookies, da Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, have been doing has been unreal. They, have, they, won they lost their first game of the season. A lot of people thought you know, it was going to be a rough year with a couple of rookies leading your offense. But then they really turned it around and they've won their last eight games. And you've got to give them credit there. And I don't think there's any team in the NFC that can really challenge them at this point. Uh, in terms of coaching, which coaches are in danger of losing their jobs at this point in the season? Pat? Mike McCarthy. Hugh Jackson. John Fox, Ben McAdoo, Todd Bowles, Marvin Lewis, my man, Jeff Fisher, and <laughs> Bill O'Brien. The, the realistic thing is this is a real possibility with all these coaches because yeah. it, it, it's just been a season where there's been a lot of disappointment with a lot of these teams. Yeah, you're going to see, like, some defensive coordinators being head coaches next year. And, like, Ben McAdoo, he's going to be, like, the offense coordinator of the Browns next year. It's going to be wild. Wow. Wild. Uh, let's, let's focus on McCarthy here. This is a guy who's been leading the Packers to the playoffs every season in the past – I want to say eight or nine years, however long he's been here. Uh, and it's just not been the same this year, even with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback. It's baffling. I mean, you get Jordy Nelson back, you think, all right, this is going to be a great offense. I mean, Eddie Lacy had a down year last year, but he was supposed to bounce back a little bit this year, I think. And it just that just hasn't been the case for the offense in general. They just haven't played that well. Aaron Rodgers has not put up nearly the numbers that we're used to seeing from him and just shows on the entire team. How about the defense last week, too, giving up almost 50 points to the Tennessee Titans? Yeah, 35 at the half. It's just terrible. That's a storyline. Marcus Mariota, he is having a breakout season. Yeah, he could be leading the, uh, the Titans to... He a, was having a, a terrible season. Yeah, in AFC South, like, it's, it's a division that where anything really can happen at this point in the season. Both, uh, all four teams have been... The, the Texans, their record, yeah, is nice, but they really haven't played as well as the record shows, so I think... I think it's really anyone's division other than the Jaguars. Do you have, like, fantasy stats? He's fourth in fantasy points out of all quarterbacks. Maybe he had, like, two good weeks. He had, like, a good week against the Dolphins and a good week last week. But he's really not playing that well this year at all. 
I would disagree with that. Really I think at the beginning of the season well. he started out fairly decent, and then he had that I think really. Was, I think he was dead last in terms of all quarterback stats through the first like three weeks of the season. Yeah, and then. He's really not having a good season. He's really not having that terrible of a season. He's not having had a, a I, I would hardly call it a breakout season or even. I would be very not. confident with Marcus Mariota as my starting quarterback going forward. Well, that's a shame. He has no targets there besides Delaney Walker. He has no targets. Delaney Walker's a great tight end. Sharp's been a solid wide receiver. Sharp's really. good. Rashard Matthews is a quality receiver. I would not say they're good. They are very they're good. mediocre. They're not, good. None of them are number one receivers by any means. And I would. Sharp's a rookie. We'll see what he has. Yeah, so right now he has no real number one receiver. I don't know if any of them Okay, are... there are a ton of teams that don't have a true number but one receiver. I wouldn't say they have any two receiver. I yeah, they do. Rashard Matthews is the number two receiver. Maybe. He played fantastic uh, for Miami last year before he got hurt. Not a not like a strong number two receiver, though. I, I don't think he's he He's a good number two. He's I don't a solid number two. He has great targets, and I think he's put up some decent passing yards. This, he's not, this he's not having a very good year. That's just not. I think he's having he's a good really season. He's really not. Well, it's a decent. There's a huge difference between a decent season and a breakout season. It is a breakout season after his rookie season. Was really his rookie not, season wasn't terrible last year. I, I think it was better I'd put than it was them this year. either on par, maybe a little bit better in terms of his rookie season. I disagree. All right. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the Titans and see if they can maybe make a run in the AFC South. Uh, back to coaches, I guess. Ron Rivera. He, another... Another coach that we didn't see this season coming. Yeah, but I think I'd put him in the same boat as like a Bruce Arians, as guys whose teams have underperformed, but I still think that a lot of people around the NFL see them as some of the best coaches in the league, so I don't think that their jobs are necessarily in jeopardy at this point. Uh, did, would you classify Sean Payton there as well, or no? Yeah, I'd put Sean Payton there. Okay. Sean Payton's well-respected around the league. Uh, and Pat, I think you had Ben Mack doing your list, correct? Yeah. Uh, the, the team is six and three, but you're, you're, I'm assuming your thinking is the fact that they should have, they should probably even be better than yeah, what they are. They, they, they really don't. They're not like, not. If I was a Giants fan, I wouldn't be passionate about what I'm seeing this season. They don't I, win. I, I, as a Giants fan, I'm not really. They, they don't win by more than like a touchdown. They, they, nothing is exciting. Like OBJ is having sort of a down season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's kind of picked it up, back up yeah. a couple of weeks, but he was in a rough stretch yeah. when the Giants were losing. Victor Cruz isn't bouncing back like people might hope he would. He's, he's, I think he's injured, but I think he's going to come back this week. Yeah. But yeah, like, I, when he was playing, yeah. and then uh, Shepherds. Yeah, he's been he's, he's been, been good, but he hasn't been good. like people are like, oh, maybe he'll be a star. He wasn't like, yeah, it's just been. Well, it's hard to be a star as a number three wideout. That's true, but he hasn't done anything that's been like, yeah, he's, he's had a couple of very solid games. Yeah, but nothing that's astounding. I think astounding. I think I think some of that can You're asking for put the blame much. on Eli Manning. I, I'm not he asking for a little much. But I'm just saying there hasn't been anything. That's been astonishing with Nobody the Giants. Nobody expected this anything astonishing from Sterling Shepard. Their, their defense has been very good, though. You gotta give that, their defense credit. Probably a top five, top ten defense in the league. And I wouldn't give any credit to Ben McAdoo on that. I, w I, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't. He was an offensive I think you had to give it to Steve Spagnuolo, defensive coordinator. Maybe yeah. he would have made a better defensive coordinator. In the front office. Yeah. For bringing oh. in all the talent that they did right. over the offseason. Yeah, Jerry Reese. I've I've had a very up and down. Uh, opinion on Jerry Reese. Uh, I was a little hesitant when they drafted Eli, Eli Apple in the first round, but he's been solid this year. And uh, in terms of the Gi in terms of McAdoo, I don't think he was the right call for a hire. Uh, I think the Giants are doing they're, they're doing better than they were probably expected. And I I, I hate to say it, but yeah, the Giants just. They kind of scare me a little bit. Yeah, he's just got a creepy mustache. <laughs> I mean, you compare his mustache to Jeff Fisher's mustache. It's a like, oh weird thing. And how can you not want the Rams to win a game if you're just looking at the two of them? Jeff Fisher's beard, that is like desirable facial hair. Ben McAdoo, creepy. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to move on to the picks this yeah. week. Uh, the Saints head to, they head to Carolina tonight uh, in this Thursday night matchup. Both these teams really playing for their season tonight. Uh, who keeps their season alive? Carolina. I think they've looked a lot better the last two, two three weeks, I'd say. I think, uh, I think New Orleans just isn't that impressive. That defense is despicable, like absolutely horrible. And I just don't know if Drew Brees can just do enough to beat a Carolina team on the rise at this point. Pat? I'm predicting a tie. Third of the season. All right. I think they're it's going to tie this football game. It's an interesting prediction. I think they if you're right, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. I I think they're just two very even teams. Like I guess. Uh, New Orleans just has an awesome offense and a terrible defense, and Carolina's just average across the board. So. All right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Carolina in this one. Uh, I think the Saints' defense is just 
very bad, and I think that Cam Newton's going to take advantage of that. Uh, the Cardinals go to Minnesota, and two more teams that have – well, one team, I guess, had really big expectations this year, and another team that didn't have any expectations, and here they are with similar records. This is kind of a tough pick because neither of them have really played that well to this point. I mean, the Vikings obviously had that great stretch for, like, the first seven weeks, but they've played – terribly in the last like four or five games I think it is uh, so I'm just gonna take Arizona in this one simply based off the fact that I love David Johnson yeah he's just an animal that's hey. all there is to it Pat uh yeah I'm gonna go with Arizona not because I think they're that good but just because I think Minnesota sucks he yeah. really hates Minnesota you hate Minnesota I, I was really passionate about Minnesota when they were like on the field I'm like oh best team in the NFL and now that they start to suck they disappoint you yeah now I'm like you know I'm done with you I understand that I'm so yeah. done I get that yeah get that. Minnesota's a very exciting team to watch this the season especially their defense but then just the defense has been okay but Sam Bradford really has fallen apart well he's Sam yeah. Bradford I, it was kind the of expectations inevitable. were really high for him and he just didn't meet them and that's why I'm gonna go with Arizona in this game uh Buffalo at Cincinnati I went with Cincinnati. I mean, this is a tough pick because, I don't know, I think Cincinnati's got an extremely talented offense and a decent defense, but I feel like they don't always play up to their capabilities, and Buffalo's just had a bit of a roller coaster season this year. But I'm going to go with Cincinnati at home in this one. I'm going to go with Buffalo because I think they're on the, going back up that roller coaster. I feel like they just took their plummet down, and I think they're heading back up. And Buffalo, you know, Tyra, Tyra Taylor. Tyra. Tyra Taylor is a very average, mediocre Quarterback who I would not want as my quarterback in my I'd team. I'd take him over Mariota. I would as well. I would not. I would. But moving on, doesn't matter at all. Uh, I think uh, Buffalo pretty good. Robert Woods is a decent uh, receiver. So you're going to yeah. bring up Robert Woods when you're talking about decent receivers, but you're going to ignore a guy like Rashard Matthews. Yeah. That's just weird. Like, Robert Woods is just not very good like at all. Yeah, but he's decent. And, so uh, Rashard Matthews, but yeah. you're just going to overlook him? I'm not saying that Robert Woods is a... Uh, wide receiver one material. Like, who thinks of, like, decent receiver Robert Woods? Because <laughs> I'm thinking of the receivers that are on Buffalo. It's just weird. It's just weird. Okay, and they got LaShawn McCoy, who's pretty good. And their defense is, yeah, pretty good. Not terrible. Not great. Not anything special. But better than Cincinnati's defense. Uh, I'm going to take Buffalo as well. Uh, Cincinnati, w watching that game on Monday night last week, they, they had – a great, I think it was second, yeah, second, second, third quarter. They played really well, but their problem was they were unable to really finish. They couldn't get get in the end zone. Basically, they kept settling for field goals. Uh, they they had a couple of big plays to set it up. They had a huge return uh, to start the third quarter. They actually ended up scoring on that drive. But they also had a couple of big plays made by Andy Dalton. Dalton played okay, and then he had a really bad pick at the end of the game. And Cincinnati in general is just. It seems like they're just missing their marks every single week. They just haven't been able to exceed the – or not but really meet the expectations that they had going into this season. And for that reason, I'm going to go with Buffalo. Uh, Tampa Bay at Kansas City. Kansas City off to a very impressive start this season. I think Tampa Bay is just really not that good. I think they got some pieces, especially offensively with Jameis Winston and Mike Evans. But I think at this point, Kansas City is a far superior team. So I'm definitely taking them. Uh, I think Tampa Bay might have a better offense than Kansas City, but Maybe. I would definitely go with Kansas City's defense to be able to shut down Tampa Bay's offense. Probably going to be a rather close game. I don't, Kansas City doesn't seem like the team is going to blow anybody out. I me. just think that Kansas, uh, Kansas City will be able to keep that offense yeah. in check pretty well. Yeah, I think I think that Kansas City, you know, their game manager of quarterback Alex Smith, he's just going to do his job. Their defense is just going to perform very well, which is what they're capable of doing. They're Kansas City's got a scary good defense when you got guys like Justin Houston, Dontari Poe, and Eric Berry in the secondary. Uh, as for Tampa Bay, they've shown some flashes that they, they, they're a team on the rise. I think their, I first, their first game of the season was very impressive. Jameis Winston, I think, threw for four touchdowns. But he's been up and down, and for that reason, I think the Kansas City Chiefs will just be too much for the Buccaneers. Uh, Miami taking on the Rams as they continue to ride the hot streak, Miami. Four in a row. Uh, and will it be five in a row? It will be week? five in a row. Jared Goff making his debut. Big storyline, finally, for the Rams. Yeah. A little nervous about that, definitely. I think he was drafted number one overall for a reason. I think he's a very talented player. Hopefully, he just plays terribly. He has a bad debut because I think that it's kind of like two extremes. You can either see a great game from him because, you know, you really have no, you have no NFL tape on him. You really don't yeah. know what he's going to go out there and do. And he really doesn't have the pressure of ha having to win now because they're really bad. 
And but I also think you know he's a, still a rookie making his NFL debut against a good defense and a good pass rush that could give him a lot of problems. So what was we'll that see about? How uh, he does. Mediocre defense. Not a it's a good defense. Yeah. It's a good. When you have guys like Nadam Kinsu and Cameron Wake on that, defense. they've been one That's of the best defensive lines in football over the last few weeks. Over Kiko Alonso has been impressive too. Congratulations! I think Jared Goff is going to go off. Uh, he could. I have waited to say the line. Very talented show. player. Um, <laughs> you disgust me, really. You do. Uh, not a job. So you think he's gonna go off? Heck yeah, I do. <clears throat> yeah, you got Todd Gurley, who's pretty good too. Yeah, he's having a great year. What, 3.1 yards per carry? I think. I'm, I'm not good saying stuff. that he's having a great year, but he's a good running back. How? How can we say that? I mean, a good rookie year, but he's got one good year, one bad year. Which one do you take? Uh, I still think he's a good running back. We'll see. Okay, we will see. Yeah, because he's gonna see. We're, you're gonna see it this week when you're watching in tears as your Dolphins well, lose. I won't be in tears if they lose. I mean, I've <laughs> seen them lose a lot. Jared Goff. I'm used to it at this point. Jared Goff I'm is gonna go off. You got Tavon Austin. You got uh, Tavon Austin has not done a single thing all season. I'm just listing his receivers. I'm not saying they're good. Well, the, why would you mention them? Because those are the people he's gonna throw to. Does anyone really throw to Tavon Austin anymore? You might throw it. Is it really just a brain for reverses? Might throw a running back a wide receiver. Whatever. What? I'm just listing his receivers. You're just so critical. Okay. Just well, so critical. You started it. Uh, yeah, okay. That's exactly it, what you did. I was talking about the Dolphins defense. You butted right in. You started No, it. I just made facial expressions, and Colin's like, oh, let's yeah, talk about well, it. Every time well, you're being I disrespectful go, of the Dolphins defense. They've been very impressive They've been very good. Oh, sorry, Dolphins every defense. Time I go back and watch these shows. Every time I go back and watch these shows, I see myself looking at Colin. I'll be saying something, and all of a sudden, I just see Pat making these weird facial expressions. <laughs> yeah. It just... Pisses me off. Man. He's annoying. All right, uh, my my take is I think the Dolphins are gonna win. He's right. And uh, five in a row. Uh, Rams run. They got Aaron Donald as their uh, pr premier defender. Dude's a beast. But I, I don't. I still don't think they're gonna be good enough to stop the run. I think JHI has been far too impressive so far this year. And I far think far too impressive. Exactly. Too impressive. He's not that impressive. He's gonna come. Well, I'm saying it is in far down. too impressive for the Rams to stop. No. Uh -uh. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking Miami in this game. Uh, Philly at Seattle. Uh, the Eagles with a bounce back win last week against the Falcons and of course the Seahawks with a big win against the Patriots last week. Definitely Seattle, especially at home. I think that they're a much better team than Philly at this point. Philly's too inconsistent for me to really pick them against a great team like Seattle right now, so definitely Seattle. Yeah, we're gonna finally see why Carson Wentz is the worst quarterback in the NFC East because- He's playing Seattle at on the road. I mean, you really, this is like, you can't take a bad, like a bad game against Seattle on the road is like, okay, well, there's Seattle and you're playing on the road. That's like a given, especially for a rookie quarterback. I mean, I, th I think you can't read into that too much. No. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, Seattle's the easy win. I, I think. I agree. I think some of the, lo I also think Seattle's going to be an easy win, but I think some of the losses that Phillies uh, had, I, I don't really think you can put many of these losses on Carson Wentz. It seems like in the losses against the Giants uh, two weeks ago, he played really well in that game. His defense really, their, their defense really just, Failed them, and also, I, I guess the one, the one issue from that game also for the Eagles was some of the fourth down calls just in that game really made Wentz look worse than he actually was. But uh, I got to go with the Seahawks in this game. I think Russell Wilson, he had a great second half last year. I think we're going to see some more of that this year. And, again, it's at Century Link Field. It's really hard to win there. Uh, Sunday night, Green Bay at Washington. I think a lot of people at the beginning of the season would think Green Bay, no doubt in this win. It seems like... Washington might be the favorite in this game. Pat, uh, Pat, we'll start with you. Yeah, it's the rematch of what we saw last year in the playoffs when Green Bay sadly beat Washington in Washington, but Washington is going to claim their ground again this week because Green Bay stinks. And Kirk Cousins had a great second half last season. He's been playing pretty good the past couple weeks. He's going to pick it up, and you are going to see your Washington Redskins win because uh, Pat Robb's going to run that ball. Too. Real quick, uh, for just a fantasy suggestion, do not start the Packers defense. They lost me six points last week. <laughs> okay, go ahead. See, unlike my colleague over here, I am a supportive person, and I'm a, I'm a good friend. I'm going to go Washington. So I think they're playing a lot better than the Packers are right now. And, you know, I'm not going to pick against them just because he's a fan, unlike some of us. Or I just think Jared Goff's going to go off. Are you, sure. Do you just like him saying that? Yeah, sure. it's true. Uh, I state the truth. You can't say it's true. It hasn't happened You'll see. yet. You'll see. It could happen, yeah, but it's not true. You'll see. It's a prediction. 72 hours, Predictions you'll see. Predictions can't be true until after yeah. the fact. Eh, almost 70 hours, you'll see. 
I'll, uh, I'll take the Redskins in this game. Uh, haven't been impressed at all with the play of the Green Bay Packers. I'm actually ashamed as a Giants fan that we lost to them. You should be. Uh, and I'm going go to or I'm gonna go with the Redskins. I think Cousins has been playing very well lately, and I think, I think he's just going to continue that. Uh, Monday night, uh, Houston at Oakland. Um, the Raiders off to an unreal start. And even Houston's been good, but it seems like they're not as good as their record shows. Matt? I think Oakland is on a complete other level from Houston. This should be an easy win for them, especially at home. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't win by 15, 20 points. Yeah, Oakland's going to go off. You got Derek Carr. He's an animal. You got uh, Latavius Murray, who Matt loves to say he's done terribly this year, even though he hasn't. Didn't say terribly, he just hasn't been that good. You know, I'm, I'm bringing in the stats next week. Go and, ahead. Oh, I will. Oh, boy. And then okay. I'm looking at their defense, which isn't terrible. It's not good at all. It's actually yeah. quite bad. Yeah, quite bad, but they're 8-1, and one, so. They also committed, like, 23 You don't need to have a game. great defense to play well. Did I say they had a great defense? I just said it's not terrible. It's not good. Oh, okay. It's not good. It's really I not. It's, I think it's decent. It's, it's rather. Not, yeah, it's not good, but it's, it's not decent. Good. It's I, it's, it's manageable. It's not good. I, I'll take the Raiders in this game, and it's just because the, uh, the Houston Texans aren't as good as their record says. So just plain and simple. Uh, even even the, the Raiders, on the other hand, their their, their record represents who they are as a team. Uh, they're like Matt, Matt, like what you said, Matt. Their defense has not been good that this year. Uh, however, Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, they've really shown why this team has one of the best offenses in the league. So is Latavius Murray. Okay. okay. Uh, we're we're going to move on to the MLB. Rick Porcello last night wins the AL Cy Young Award. Uh, there's been some disputes that Verlander should have won it. Justin Verlander, the Detroit Tigers. Um, should he have won it? I really think there's no wrong answer to this question. I think it's one of the rare times when there's really like two good deserving candidates who you could really make the argument either way. I think there's it might be a slight upset because Verlander really – Picked up a lot of steam for this, uh, the whole Verlander Cy Young campaign. Picked up a lot of steam as he made his way down the stretch. So I think it might have been a slight upset, but I really don't think you could go wrong with either guy. Uh, one quick point before I ask for your opinion. If you think about it, uh, Scherzer won the Cy Young, or the NL Cy Young. Verlander and Porcello were candidates for the AL Cy Young. At one point, all three of these guys were on the same team. Same rotation. Which is, which is incredible. Okay, uh, Pat, what yeah. are your thoughts? I'd give it to my homeboy Porcello if I was voting. I just, I, eh, I think wins, everyone says they're not, I, I don't think they're important, but I don't think they're something that shouldn't be looked at either, because the idea is to win games, and he did I that agree. more I than think, Verlander did. I think did. they should be taken into consideration, but definitely a lot less than they have yeah. been in the past. E exactly, but everyone's just like hating on the wins, yeah. like, oh, they don't matter, they don't matter. I think well, they I do. I think at 22 yeah. and 4, yeah, you that's... can't do that as a bad pitcher. I mean, exactly. I mean, technically, in like the realm of possibility, you could, but... Realistically, you're gonna have to put up some good numbers to yeah, do you that. You gotta go out and so pitch think, five innings yeah. a game to get the win. That's true. You know, you could allow 19 mm -hmm. runs through four innings, but they're gonna pull you. So, I mean, you gotta pitch those five innings. Uh, yes, you do. Yeah, but both these guys are deserving candidates. Um, I, I, I don't think there's a wrong choice, like you said, Matt. But I, I don't get how two uh, voters left Verlander completely off. Yeah, I think that's. I, that's I think weird. it's ridiculous. I don't understand that. Uh, so, yeah, and that, that, that ultimately really was the difference. It was. But, yeah, both these guys deserving, and congratulations to Porcello for winning it. Uh, Blue Jays, they signed Kendrys Morales to a contract. Does that mean Edwin Encarnacion is history? For sure. I mean, I don't, they're not going to give him the money he wants, probably not the years either. Justin Smoke, too, I believe. They, Blue Jays re-signed him as well. Yeah, and I think they might lose Edwin and Bautista this offseason. And I, I expected them to retain at least one of them. I uh, did too. But Pat, we'll see. Are you are you surprised? No, I don't think I, I, I don't think there's really any question that Edwin was going to leave. I think Bautista was the guy that I thought was more likely to resign there. But I don't think Edwin Carnacion is going to go to the Sox. Like there's so much hype that he's going to, but there's just no rumor that the Red Sox are even really pushing that hard for him. It seems like they're pushing harder for Beltron, which disgusts me. Exactly. A lot. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's a calm before the storm. Maybe we just won't see it coming and all of a sudden, bang, Edward Encarnacion signs a deal with hopefully. the Red Sox. Uh, we move on to the NBA. Uh, the Celtics and Clay Thompson. Celtics apparently rumored to <coughs> maybe be in talks with the, with the Golden State Warriors to make a deal for their shooting guard, Clay Thompson. Are you buying this? What do you mean in terms of like the legitimacy of the Yeah, league? yeah. Not really, no. I really don't think it's anything more than speculation at this point. Yeah. 
I just uh, you got the initial report like last week or I think. I haven't heard much about nothing it now. since then. Right. I mean, I just don't. I don't buy it at all. There's some speculation that Gordon Hayward was going to go to the Celtics like before the season. So. Uh, all sorts of t- uh, Hayward, Butler, even Demarcus Cousins at one point. There's been a lot of these, and nothing's really formulated. I think that the Butler one went further than any of them. Yeah. I think Thompson really just. I think that was just kind of floated out there. Yeah. Uh, and. Speaking of the Celtics, they've won three of their last four, and their current shooting guard, Avery Bradley, has been playing unreal lately. Uh, do you think he's going to stay in Boston, or do you think they will move him uh, at some point in the near future? I think, in, I think the only way you're moving Avery Bradley is for an elite, elite player, a guy like a DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis, somebody who's just a huge game changer, because the improvement we've seen from Avery Bradley since he came in the NBA is astronomical. I mean, he was just a perimeter defender, undisciplined guy, couldn't do really anything offensively when he came in, and he's developed himself into a great two-way player, one of the best two-way players in the league, and also fantastic rebounder at the two-guard spot. Uh, one last story here for the NBA, Russell Westbrook, off to quite a start. 32 po- he's averaging 32 points, 9.5 rebounds, and uh, almost 10 assists. That's historic right there. There's only one other guy who's come close to that, well, actually exceeded that, and that was uh, Oscar Robertson. Matt, do you think he has a chance at averaging a triple-double this season? He really does. I mean, there's no, there's nobody it, to it, hold him back. Faces again. I know he is. See, I'm going to watch this back, and I'm going to be like, I hate you. But, yeah, there's really nobody holding him back in OKC. I mean, it's his team. He does what he wants, and he's one of the best players in the NBA. I really think he's got the talent. He's got the role players as well. this, and he lost Kevin Durant, Serge Ibaka. And I think that's actually helped his numbers. Yeah, you got, he's, got, he's got a good guy also in the backcourt with the Oladipo. Oladipo, definitely. Good so pairing. that's helpful. Uh, Pat, your thoughts? No, everyone cools down. You don't, you don't stay this That's amazing. just not true. Yeah. Everyone doesn't just cool down. That's yeah. not a thing. Yeah, you do. No one stays like hot, 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 hot off Michael the Jordan sure never cooled do. down. But Russell Westbrook isn't Michael Jordan. Russell Westbrook isn't the best player in NBA history. Okay. But that's but just he's an example. A fantastic player. Hakeem Elijah one never cooled down. I'm not saying he's not going to have a good season. Him He'll have a great him. season. But he's not going to have these astronomical numbers. He did more. He did a similar thing last year. He really did. He put up like high 20s for points, put up like uh, 9 or 10 assists. And he had like 20 triple doubles, too. I think like uh, probably like 6 or 7 rebounds a game. So this, and then losing to Ibaka and Durant frees him up more. So I think that it's completely reasonable that he could do this. We'll see. And he had some of those really nice highlight reel plays yesterday. Why don't you uh, button that little wrist thing here on your shirt? Wow. Where? Wasn't buttoned before. I did button. You buttoned that after. You buttoned it after. Like two minutes ago, I saw it. It was, uh, it was loose. I saw it. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Uh, we're going to go to uh, NCAA basketball just tipping off this past week. Uh, Duke and Kansas. One great game to start the season. Uh, Frank Mason hits a game winner for Kansas, and they basically upset Duke. I mean, Kansas is a top 10 team, but I don't think anyone expected Kansas to win this game. Yeah, I don't really think so either. It was an awesome game. Really, really great. And uh, I don't think it's that indicative, though, of these two teams because Duke's missing a lot right now. Right. And the fact that they were even able to play a team as good as Kansas this close is... Very impressive to me. Uh, Pat? Uh, I think it's characteristic of Duke to choke in big games. He just has the prejudice against Duke for absolutely no reason. So just take everything he says with a grain of salt. But they, just they do. They, they're always supposed to be like a top team. and They never seem to get all the way to the championship. Right, except for when they won, like, what, two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. okay. They, they said never. They went, there against U- they went there against UConn a good five, six years ago when Kemba Walker was on that UConn team. But every year it comes out like, oh, they're going to be number one. and then There's a not. bunch of teams that that happens to. Kentucky's the same and way. But Kentucky's don't actually you think they should at so least be considered, considering they have the greatest coach in NCAA history as their coach? I'm not saying they shouldn't be considered, but I just think that this was a characteristic game. This is characteristic How? of Duke. It just... was a great game from them. They're missing three of their best players. Okay. I just think they don't win big games often. They, they, That's not true. More than any other team I can think of, they choke. Baylor. In big games. But Baylor's not like a big name. Well, they're like, they've been a really yeah. good program for but the last few they're years. They're not Duke. Okay. They're, they're well, they not. have to well, put themselves in the position to the, play those The years. difference, too, is Baylor tends to choke in the tournament. And if you're t- talking about Duke, I, they rarely choke in the tournament, other than the one year against Mercer. That's the exception. Yeah. But they're routinely a Sweet 16 think, Elite 18. I think they lost in the Sweet 16 a couple years ago. A couple of years ago to Wake Forest, which was like a... Still, Sweet 16. Yeah. That, that's that, really good. That, that's, that's good, but that's top 16 team in the end. And oh, there's only like, what, 300 of them? Yeah. I mean, 
Okay. Pretty bad. Yeah, I, that's I'd why you're not number one. If you're only making it to the Sweet 16, you're not number one. And Duke was ranked number one. So I think this is characteristic of Duke. They choke. But you just but, can't say that they have a history of winning. They're one of the winningest uh, colleges in the world. And they also have a history, history of choking. No, they don't. But they do. Okay, well, anytime you if, make huge games, anytime you play in so many huge games, you're going to lose some. They have a history like of being pretty clutch to Christian Leitner. That's completely inevitable. Okay, Austin whatever. Rivers with the buzzer beating. Well, I think Kansas won. They're a better team than Duke. They're not a better team than Duke. Okay, That's we'll right. see. We'll see down the line who they're wins really, it all, who doesn't win team. it all. They're not a better team. That's okay. Not... We go from a couple of very good teams to a team that's really struggled to start the season. The UConn Huskies, they're 0-2 with losses to Wagner and Northeastern to start the season. I, 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 can't, I don't really have any words to describe how it's embarrassing it is. It's pretty bad. I mean, they came in and ranked, I think, like 16 in the nation. Yep. And they have, that's an extremely talented roster that they have. I, they should be 2-0 and right now without a question. But if you're a UConn fan and if you're UConn, I don't think you have too much reason to panic. I think it's a super young team, a lot of talent. I think they'll get better as the season goes on and in the next couple of years as these guys mature. Uh, your thoughts on uh, UConn's rough start to the season, Pat? Um, well, it's obviously it's probably going to knock them out of the top 25 right now. It should. They they'll, might work their way back in. It's pretty interesting. They might miss the tournament this year if they keep losing these weird games like this. But because they're not one of the, you're not going to see UConn in, make the tournament as a 15 team, as a 16 team. They're either going to make it as like a a 10 team, or they're not going to make it at all. So they're. They, I think they've gone down to a bubble team. At this point, yeah. <laughs> And uh, UConn's always a team that contends in that uh, AAC tournament. They won it all last year. Or, no, they didn't. Did they win all last? I can't remember. I, I think they made it remember. to the championship. But they did end up making the uh, tournament. And like that, this team just should not be 0-2. That's the bottom line. They should line. be 2-0, without yeah. a doubt. There's just no way. I think Temple won that. Did Temple? It was te uh, it might, it might have been, actually. I don't know who won the AAC Because I remember, that, remember they made that some, they had the guy make the... Uh, Adams, Jalen Adams, I think. Oh, yeah, that was Cincinnati. Yeah, that, I know, but he won, made yeah. like the big shot, so that was like the big win, but I don't think they won at all. I, I don't remember. Temple. I don't know. I, I do remember them, though, being in as like an 11 or 12 yeah. seed, I think. So, uh, Lastly, uh, who is the early title favorite? We already talked about Duke, maybe Kentucky as well. Matt, who, who is your favorite right now? Still Duke, and if not Duke, Kentucky. I think Duke is still missing um, Harry Giles, Jason Tatum, and Marcus Bolden, who are probably three of the top five recruits going into the season, so that's a ton of talent to be missing off a roster and still be number one in the nation. Uh, probably not after this week, after the loss to Kansas, but they'll still be probably top five high uh, team. Pat? Uh, I went with Kentucky. I just think John Calipari is a great coach and Tyler Ulis is a great player. Yeah, well, it's a shame that Tyler Ulis yeah. is in the NBA playing for the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> Whatever. But uh, y you mentioned, you know, Calipari, a fantastic coach. Uh, we, we have a good relationship with him as a UMass fans. Playing, coaching them in the 1990s. The yeah, uh, leading them to, I think it was a Final Four appearance one year. Yeah, and they were ranked multiple number one. tournament uh, appearances, a lot of deep runs, best time in UMass basketball history, yeah. apart from the Dr. J days. Yeah, uh, and I, th I think you make a case for Kentucky. Uh, Google it. it. I'm finding it really hard to choose between Duke and Kentucky. Maybe Two great teams. I, I, I guess going into the Kansas game, I would give the edge to Duke, but I think it's a lot closer now, now that Duke lost to Kansas. I mean, you can't really judge it on one loss, especially to a team like Kansas, but I guess I'll give the edge to Duke still for now. Uh, you, like you mentioned, they've had some injuries, and I think they'll be able to turn around, and I think Coach K will get this team uh, ready for that uh, March tournament. Uh, well, that's all the time we have here today. Uh, I'm Colin Casey, once again, joined by Patrick Varvey, Matt Rodolakis. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Spartan Center.